Hi, today I wanted to talk about one of our new um, effectively operating systems that's available for some of our units. Um, this is our ADRA NDR, which is a, a network detection and response um, software platform. Um, so we're able to run this on our QGD products, which is our, our QNAP Guardian series of products, which are um, effectively PoE switches, the rack mount variant. Um, and we're able to uh, change the operating system uh, from QTS uh, to the ADRA NDR um, um, option instead, which will give us some um, extra um, uh, network detection and response functions that I'm going to go through here. Um, so it's a effectively a smart edge switch with um, separate security functions. Um, so depending on the unit you go, depends on how the layout of the um, the front of the switch will look. Um, but it's got uh, things like traps in there to basically attract the attacks, um, real time analysis, so it's able to check everything without um, impeding performance of your network. Um, and it also lets you create the response once something has been detected. What happens? You're able to check that. Um, so here's a, a typical um, network topology within an organization. Um, they may have a, a primary core switch, uh, distribution switch, many access switches. Now the access switches are typically where, say, the, the users, perhaps the servers, things like that are all connected into. Um, and a sort of core problem with that is if there is a, uh, a threat within the network um, on, say, on an end user's machine anywhere, um, it's able to traverse everything um, effectively from the core switch out. Um, so it's able to cross between access switches, things like that. Um, there are ways to protect against that, you know, VLANs, some other things, but this um, effectively means that they're, you're not isolating where the specific threat came from. Um, the solution that we've got is to replace the access switches with the Andra, ADRA NDR um, option instead. Um, so now we're able to um, check what the, um, uh, the, the threat is, isolate it, uh, come up with a response to it. Um, so we're, we're effectively able to um, find out what it is, where is the problem, block that problem from happening, and then go deal with it. We're going to get notified that there's an issue there and we can go um, um, sort the problem out. Um, to give you a look at the uh, the different switches that we've got, um, so we've got the QGD 1600P, so that's um, uh, pretty much good for up to 50 devices. Um, we start moving up the range to slightly more powerful models with um, different configurations in the switch ports. So instead of um, like on the first one there, it's just one gig LAN ports. Um, you're able to move up to some 2.5 gig, have some 10 gig uplinks, and, and the same with the uh, the one with um, twice the processing cores and, and more RAM um, at the top end there. Um, so different ones, um, they'll have a management port so that you can access it directly um, without going through the switch ports. You can go through one of the management ports instead. Um, but this, uh, they all have PoE, so if you're hooking up things like wireless access points, security cameras, things like that, um, they're all able to take advantage um, of the PoE that's on board here. Um, so the next question is really how do you turn one of our QGD products um, into an Andra, ADRA NDR? Because by default they do ship with our QTS uh, NAS OS on them. Um, so effectively you first have to install some storage. So depending on the unit, depends whether that's two and a half inch SSDs, M.2 SSDs, or perhaps a mixture of both. Um, so here's some recommendations. We do have this information on our website as well. Um, Make sure that QTS is up to date on the very latest firmware version um, and then you can go um, use the auto update feature in the firmware update page. Uh, once that's done you're going to factory reset um, the QGD unit and back to reinitialize it back to its complete factory settings and on the first page you'll see in the setup wizard is you will see an option to choose another firmware. Now you'll generally only get this if your um, unit is online via DHCP at this point. Um, if you wanted to uh, do this manually we do have the firmware available in the download section for each unit so you can choose another firmware and choose the manual option if you wish um, so you can still do it in an offline capacity as well uh, once it's uh, gone through the full update um, you can log into the uh, to the ADRA NDI using the login credentials you created uh, throughout the um, setup process um, and then you'll be logged into the uh, the ADRA NDR software with a effectively a 30-day trial license 
Um, so once it's uh, logged in with the trial license, you can purchase then the standard license to have all the functions working. Um, you'll get a quite a bit of information um, without having a license, uh, but you can't really do anything with that information or pinpoint anything. Um, so here's basically the differences between the trial uh, version and the subscription version. Um, so it will only display uh, limited information for the trial. Um, so it's going to show you, say, network segments something was detected, but not the specific IP address. Um, and also a lot of the action points are going to be grayed out. So you can see over here on the right hand side, anything in a box there. These are action points where you might be able to see more logs, create comments against things, um, create exclusions so that that thing is normal. We do want that um, task to be excluded from the checks. It is OK in our network. Um, you can't do any of this uh, sort of changing around uh, within uh, the, the trial version. So the subscription one would be needed for that. Um, so right before we jump into a device demo, um, in our software store, you can see here the uh, the pricing for the Adra NDR software. So uh, one year subscription, $399 a year, and you can go up to the uh, three year option for $1,099 uh, for the three years as well. Uh, so over here, I do have one of our QGD units uh, converted to the um, Adra NDR software. And here you can see you've got access to the switch. So you can either access the uh, the switch console directly from within um, the Adra NDR interface. So you can um, effectively access it directly through here. Um, or you can log in completely separately uh, directly into it. Oh, it's logged me out, timed me out. Um, but this can also uh, log you into it as well. Um, so you can have direct access to the switch management outside of the Adra NDR. And this is really unaffected. Now, whether the, the NAS was running uh, QTS or you're running the Adra NDR version of our um, platform, um, this side is unchanged. The QSS software is unchanged. The management of the switch is still the same. Um, so here we come back. It looks quite different from QTS in terms of when you go into the control panel. A lot less options because it's effectively no longer a NAS. Um, so these are just functions for the hardware itself, um, basic things like UPS, do you want it to auto shut down after a period of no power doing system updates? Um, one thing I will show you in system updates is there's a lot more than just the firmware updates. So here we've got the firmware for the NAS itself, which is fine, we're up to date there. But then over here we have the software components. And in the software components, uh, we have a lot of um, subsections in here. Um, effectively, this is a bit like the app sensor on QTS. Um, so all the different apps are here um, to update those. So you can set it to uh, auto update. So you can set a schedule for auto updating if you wish as well. Um, now the app we're most interested in is the Adra NDR app that has been added. Uh, so in here, it's going to give us a dashboard um, of everything that's happening. So this this particular unit here does have a license, so I am going to be able to make changes here. Um, so here we can see we've simulated a few attacks here. So we've got some high-risk devices, uh, medium-risk attacks, and high-risk attacks. Um, so as you're going through, you can sort of see a nice little chart here, so you can see what's happening. The top five IP addresses with threats, so you can change it to MAC addresses if you wish. Um, so this is a really informative dashboard so that you can check the, uh, the health status of the network. Um, over here on the, the left, we've got some security options. So if we go into risk management, we can see some detailed information of everything that's been detected. Uh, we can scroll a fair bit here so we can see what the issues are. Um, let's pick one that's uh, come up here as red here, for example. So you can click on this and see um, all the activities of that device over time. So you can see uh, what's been happening with that device historically. So you can go through and see that. Um, you can then add a comment next to it. So if you wanted to, so I'll just put my name there, you can put a comment next to it and save a comment so you can uh, quickly at a view, see what it is, or you could let somebody know um, this threat has already been uh, checked, so no need to keep checking it if you wanted to pass some information on to some colleagues, if you've got a few people managing your network, so you can do that. Uh, if we come down to threat analysis, this gives us more information about the specific threats. So we can see down here, we've got a, a trigger was happened with a scan. So perhaps uh, this was an IP scan or something like that that was happening. Um, so we can see that this was um, uh, an action that was attempting to detect the operating systems of devices on the network. So we've, we've marked that up as a threat. Now here, if I want to say that that's okay, I don't mind that happening, whatever the um, threat may be. It might not be, you know, you probably don't want somebody on the network detecting what the operating systems are. But if it was something more benign um, and something that is normal for your network, uh, you can come over here and click the plus symbol. And you can say, I want to say that the type of OS scan, so operating system scan, um, I want to exclude this IP address. So I'm, I want to allow this IP to perform this action without alerting in the threat analysis. 
so you can click save there and it will add them to the um, at the list of um, um, things in the policy that are okay for that one to do. So if we come down here to the uh, policy, policy management, uh, we can see the rules. We've kept it quite simple. We're, we're really just doing everything um, on our uh, setup that we've got here. So we're saying source all. So we want to check everything, not just specific IP ranges. And down here, you get to choose the policy of what's being enacted. So we've set it to uh, just basic protection. So it's just going to auto quarantine high risk attacks only. So things like that OS scan, it's going to tell me it's happening, but it's not going to do any action because of it. Um, if I bumped it up to the advanced protection, um, that OS scan would be prevented. So that the person doing the OS scan um, would effectively now no longer have network access if I change this uh, to advanced protection until it was sorted out or a um, exclusion was added for them. Um, so that's how we've got ours set up here with just effectively one rule. You can add more rules if you want to add specific rules. Um, down here we've got the traps. Um, so traps are basically... Um, things that attract cyber attacks so if there's basically going to be something on the network that's malicious uh, it's going to get picked up by the trap um, so that we can protect the uh, the network uh, from anything that's happening so you can set these up you can set up multiple trap instances if you want um, for a bit more protection um, so we've just kept it quite simple trap hostname qnap nas1 um, and this is just um, just an ip address that we've set on the network there but you can you can uh, um, set up multiple of these if you want to um, in the advanced, so this is where any exclusions would be added. So I showed you before the option to add, say, that OS scan to being excluded. So this is where they would appear. Um, so if at any time you change your mind and you don't want one that you've previously um, had an exception for, uh, you want to now start blocking it, uh, blocking it again, uh, you can come over here and delete them from this list. So they will go back to being reported in the threat analysis. Um, you can also set port monitoring, which ports on the switch are being monitored. Um, so you can perhaps give um, a, a separate port, just absolutely no restrictions if you wanted to. Um, for our um, setup here, we've got all ports covered, just uh, belt and braces, make sure everything's covered by it. Uh, notifications, um, you can set up notifications. Ours is just in a test LAN here, so there's no need for us to have notifications. But you can create network rules here in the notification center, so you can go through and set up uh, when something happens, what does it notify you for? Who does it notify you? And um, is it on an email? Is it a push notification? You can set all that up here in the notification center if you wanted to as well. Uh, so down here in the uh, system section, um, this is all uh, system information, effectively like the control panel or updates just for ADRA. Uh, for the N NDR software. So here we can go through, we can see all the different updates of all the different um, um, services within it. So the traps, control center, user interface, things like that. So we can update all of these individually if we want to. You can click update all. Um, here in the logs, it's telling you how long do you want the logs to be kept for. Um, so some people may want to keep them for a full year. So you can have that. You can clear the logs out if you, uh, let's say, had a, a bunch of threats. You want to delete the logs. You want to carry on fresh. See if you can um, see something more specific in the logs. You can do that. Uh, you can also send the logs off to something else as well. So you can add a destination. So maybe you've got a syslog server somewhere else and you want to collate the logs from all your appliances into one place. Uh, we do support that as well. Um, here it's uh, you can do a health check on everything. Um, so here everything's passed uh, since we last did a health check. So it's been a while. We should probably do that again. But everything here was passed last time we did a health check. Um, and you've also got analytics if you want to send them up to us. Um, over here, you've got the uh, the proof that the license that we, we have. We have a 12-month trial license here, which is activated. Um, so this is um, Adra NDR, our network detection uh, and response function um, uh, within the QGD products, the QNAP Guardian products. Um, again, this is um, on our um, uh, rack-mounted um, Guardian products only, so they're all PoE switches. Um, again, depending which one that you uh, you go for depends on the functions that you're going to get. So I'll just throw up the uh, the comparison here between the different models again. Um, so if you wanted to pick from one of them, uh, those are the three options that we support this on. Uh, again, the, the trial function is there. Um, if anybody would like to trial it with a, uh, a full license, please do let us know. We'd need your uh, QNAP ID and we'll be able to arrange you a trial license um, so that you can um, test uh, the, the, the full version of, of ADRA rather than the, the limited trial. We can give you a, a full functioning trial if you would like um, to, uh, to have a play around with this and see if it's suitable for your setup. Um, if you've got any questions at all on the uh, the Adra NDR uh, functionality that we've we've been talking about here, please do ask them in the comment section down below, um, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.